On Robin Hood Radio, we're pleased to welcome in Vivian Nashatka, who is uh, running uh, against Roberta Willis this year in the uh, newly changed uh, 64th District. Vivian, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Marshall. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, and and one of the things we have been emphasizing that, uh, especially for people in uh, in Kent and people in Canaan, um, who are uh, in, especially Canaan, who are used to voting in a different district, they are now included in this district, and it's a more contiguous district, uh, and uh, and so it's it's somewhat new. Well, Vivian, uh, first of all, let's talk a little bit about uh, why you decided to run. Uh, this year uh, for the representative seat? Well, Marshall, as I've uh, observed what's happening in this state uh, with increased taxes, um, what I would consider uh, irrational spending, and the fact that um, the middle class is being crushed by them, I thought that it's, it's time for a business person to go and represent uh, the voters and citizens of the 64th. My background is in accounting, and I've done a lot of budget analysis work over the years, cost analysis, and I feel that bringing that um, to the table in Hartford would be a very good thing. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, about your business background. Uh, let's say five or six years ago, would you have ever considered that you'd be in this position now, running for this position? Absolutely not. Yeah. I couldn't imagine it five or six years ago. Um, then I was at home with my children, um, which I had chosen to do, and um, I, I had no plans really to go into public service, at least at a state level. Now, uh, so so we, we, we look at your running this year, and we all know uh, what condition the country's in and what conditions the state in. Uh, so you're really focusing in, and from what I've seen and from talking to you for uh, a few minutes today, uh, the main key issues on the economy for you are taxes, spending, and jobs. Absolutely, yes. And I believe that they're all interrelated. Um, you really can't bring jobs to Connecticut without making it a business-friendly state or a more business-friendly state than what it is today. Um, businesses are leaving. The individuals that I'm talking to as I go door to door are telling me that they're barely surviving. Um, many of them um, had employees three or four years ago, um, have had to completely let go of all their employees and are struggling to make it themselves. They're considering leaving the state. They just have real estate that they have to sell before they do that. So I would like to see that turned around. I believe that um, if we reduce the taxes and fees that affect businesses that um, and, and put the money back into the businesses where they could invest capital, um, they could provide jobs, they could do research and development, that we would be attracting businesses back to the state. We're positioned very well between Boston and uh, Manhattan, and we should be a magnet for businesses coming from all over the country. Now, uh, you're speaking, uh, and I think is what's interesting here is when you run for a position in the state legislature, uh, you, of course, have to speak for locally, but you also have to uh, broaden it out and take a look at the big picture as a whole because I guess the big picture as a whole really does affect the local picture. It certainly does, yes. And how legislators make decisions in Hartford, especially concerning, again, taxes and fees, um, will affect not only the 64th, the businesses in the 64th, but all over the state. And I guess that's one of the things that I have thought a lot about. I know that um, my neighbor and opponent has repeatedly said, well, she was a champion of the Enterprise Zone in Torrington. But um, this district consists of more than just the Enterprise Zone. And there are several uh, places here, well, right here in Sharon, Sharon Hospital, for example, where the health provider tax, which was once considered the uh, hospital death tax, has affected this community and the hospital negatively. Uh, 26 jobs were lost um, on account of having to pay that additional um, 700000 in hospital taxes. Also, New Milford Hospital was affected. 
Um, so to me, uh, bringing business back into the state means lowering the cost to do business, lowering the electric rates, uh, changing regulations so it's a lot easier to do business. Those are the things that I'm hearing from business owners that need to be addressed and uh, changed. We are speaking with Vivian Nashatka, who is uh, running against Roberta Willis uh, in the 64th District uh, in this election. Uh, when we were talking before we uh, got on air also, we talked a little bit about uh, public safety and how that's a concern of yours as well. Yes, it is. Um, we all know that the death penalty was repealed in the last legislative session, and many people who I talk to say, you know, there are two very vulnerable groups in our communities who are at higher risk um, to be perpetrated upon by uh, predators, and those are the elderly, uh, maybe those who are single and by themselves, or our children. And I look at the fact that we don't have the death penalty anymore, uh, and that 7,400 criminals were released through the early release program. Um, again, my neighbor and opponent says that those individuals were all uh, nonviolent criminals, but that is not the case. There were definitely uh, criminals who had been convicted of murder, rape, child molestation. You know, these are, are people that could harm others once they're released. Um, and, and it's a concern that many of these people did not have a place to go to. They didn't have work that was uh, set up for them as they got out of, of prison. So I uh, certainly think that the public safety issue is a large one. Um, with Governor Malloy, he has also uh, let a lot of the state troopers go. He's consolidated uh, different uh, barracks around the state. So it, it is a large issue, and, and I believe that as a state representative for the 64th, I will have the interests of the citizens in all nine towns um, number one. That's my priority. I will represent them, not the governor's agenda, not special interests. All right. We also were speaking, b before you got involved in running, uh, one of the things that got you involved uh, in, 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 in politics is the fact uh, term limits. That's right. Absolutely. Um, I believe that being a politician should not be something that becomes a career. It is... It, it was intended to be something that you did part-time where you were serving your community as a representative and then you came back home and you allowed somebody else to go and serve. Um, now it, it is considered uh, wonderful if you get all this experience so you know how to maneuver at the Capitol. I don't think that's good for business. I don't think that's good for um, our elderly or for our families or our children in any way. I believe in term limits and I think that um, whether it's at a state level or federal level, whether they're representatives or senators or judges, that there should be term limits on all politicians. All right, well we have about, uh, about uh, three, three minutes left and uh, in your own terms, uh, speaking directly to the voters now, um, why? Vivian Nashatka should be the next representative from the 64th district. First of all, I would like to go to Hartford and represent the best interests of the constituents of the 64th. And I think those interests right now from talking to people are the fact that they are being crushed by taxes and that spending is out of control in Hartford and the debt that we are placing upon the backs of our children is enormous. I believe with my background and experience that I can go and make the changes that are needed and that we can bring this state back to what it once was. It was my ancestors who helped found Windsor, Connecticut and other parts of Connecticut. And um, I would like to see this become uh, a magnet again for business and opportunity and for our young people 
and that's why I'm running. And I hope that the listeners to this program will consider voting for me so that they can have a chance at uh, prosperity again in the state. Thank you, Marshall. Well, we want to thank uh, you and everybody who takes the time to run uh, for an elected office. Uh, and it doesn't matter whether it's on the state level or on the local level, and it doesn't matter if it's planning and zoning or, or, or if it's uh, whatever commission. It doesn't matter whether it's paid or whether it's volunteered. You can do no higher service than, uh, than work for the people in the communities that you live in and to everybody that runs and who, who makes the decision. And it's not an easy decision because it's a time-consuming decision to run. Uh, thank you uh, for taking the time, the interest, and, and having that uh, to run and giving people a choice on Election Day. Thank you, Marshall. I appreciate this opportunity.